filling an entire swimming pool with raspberry pies for nefarious reasons. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Joe Bryan, everybody watching us live on YouTube and Twitch. How you doing, Joe? You doing I right? am doing very good. Doing good, having a little bit of a conversation about scale before in the pre-show. Yeah, absolutely. Scale 21X is coming the beginning of March. <laughs> so I've been preparing. I've already Looking started forward packing. to it. Yeah. <laughs> What you been up to? Oh boy! So I've actually been playing that the freaking beautiful game Genshin Impact almost every night. <laughs> I haven't really gotten into an open world RPG game in quite some time, but I actually love the characters and the the story is good. And the most beautiful of all, and the most wonderful of all, is that is the scenery and art. It's just absolutely beautiful, and I love the style. <laughs> so it's it, it's beautiful you're finally getting addicted to that yeah i right. i am actually that you know of course in track mania <laughs> so. i have been playing around um here in the studio i have the test bench in the middle of the floor on that corner over there because i was working on testing some uh things for the linux kernel from a linux kernel developer last night because i get those emails now and i'm like all right Got that sorted. And I thought to myself, you know what? You know what? We need to start playing around with pipe wire because I said I was going to play around with pipe wire in 2024. And I wanted to do a guide on if this is the first time you're listening to this like little rant of how to get your firewire audio interfaces up and working with pipe wire or just how feasible that is. And I did some early experiments with that last night. And for the most part, for the most part, it's all right. It's not too bad. But when it falls apart, it falls apart spectacularly. Oh. And uh, you do run into a lot of things that, you know, I'm just going to have to cover in a guide and in a video mm -hmm. and stick all that together. Maybe in the next week or two, I got a bunch of stuff coming in. Uh, if you go check on the forums on Interfacing Linux, there's a thread. Like, I got a, I got, I got some audio stuff from 1997 in the mail today. I'm not going to tell you about it. You can go take a look mm -hmm. at it yourself and leave your hot comment because uh, you know what? It's probably going to work on Linux still. But there's a story behind this particular company that I think people will find interesting. Well, let's go ahead and hop right into it mm -hmm. this week. I say at like, what, five minutes? Right into it, people. Five minutes into the show. Because I want to tell you about a new thing from Mozilla. Debian packages. That might sound crazy. <laughs> But if you're living in this world of um, snaps, I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, they get a nice little post on the Mozilla blog, kind of outlining all the new hotness that they got going on. A new app repo directly connected to the Firefox release process. That's right. And then this is going to be for the stable bits. They've already had one for Firefox testing. And this is 100% built by Mozilla, not 97.3%. So you don't have to worry about third parties or who not. And they claim better performance, so I'm guessing they threw like an O3 tag on it or something for the builds. Who yeah. knows? But this <laughs> is the solution for those of you who have been using, you know, the Moz Team PPA. Um, you know, and especially if you're on the Ubuntu, is because it went snap over there, and you're like, I'm just tired of dealing with this. I don't like being a test subject. And here's another thing: it's quite the bonus for my brothers and sisters running a Chromebook. Mm -hmm. If you want to install. You know, if, if you get a Chromebook and you're doing the Christini thing, you no longer have to use a flat pack to get the latest and greatest. And I think that is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. It's just so, it's just so nice to finally be able to use apt with Firefox. <laughs> I can't tell you, you know, I, I just, I just installed it in one of my uh, Ubuntu 22.04 rigs and was completely happy with it. and. You know, for years and years, and, and I think Ven, it's the same way, he's been running the tar.bz2 build on the Debian's. <laughs> for the years. latest and greatest. Now, to yeah. be fair, Debian has <laughs> Firefox ESR. Yeah, they do. Built into it. So mm -hmm. I think that's pretty neat. You know, threw that in, and if you want to get rid of your snaps, or if you're just running, you know, a Debian or Debian, Debian derivative, go ahead and pop that in. 
get it, latest and greatest. I've been using their repo on Debian 12 for the nightlies. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's been running great. Uh, I've been playing around a lot more with Foxfire than I typically would. And uh, yeah, mm-hmm. good times. I just wanted to give that a quick mention at the beginning of the show because yeah. you might want to throw it in and play with it yourself. The more people you using different browsers so we don't live in like this world where everything is Chromium, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Thank God for Firefox. And we're, we're Firefox market share is dangerously low. So is. if you get a chance, go try it out and play yes. around with it. But Jill's not done with this RAM. Uh, for whatever reason, <laughs> Jill, Jill saw pancake RAM, flat RAM, and says, this is, this is my new thing. This is, this is. Uh, I, I'm going to white knight flat RAM for all yeah. of 2024. <laughs> Dare you say anything negative about it? Yes. <laughs> So actually, you know, last week we talked about the compressed attached memory module, which, you know, will be a new standard of laptop memory, which lays flat horizontally, allowing um, us users to upgrade the RAM and thin and light laptops. Well, several CAM modules had been seen floating around the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas at several booths, including at the Micron booth, like we talked about last week where the cam memory for laptops was spotted. But it turns out that a representative at SK Hynix, who is one of the biggest makers of computer memory, made a comment at CES suggesting that the compression attached memory would also be introduced to desktop PCs. (laughs) And, you know, to me, this would welcome A great change for us PC builders to have memory that lays flat for airflow, convenience for small and mini ITX builds, and, you know, greater flexibility in location, like the modern NVMe drives give us because they're horizontal as well. And it would just be nice also to have the same memory form factor for both laptops and desktops. Wouldn't that be cool? (laughs) I like the idea. I like the concept of it. Yeah. The barrier to friction, when I think about stuff like this, I always have to roll it back to, will the motherboard manufacturers buy into it? Because they're very hesitant to, you know, know, we were Mm -hmm. just seeing some movement that we talked about, you know, with the backside connectors and adopting the new power supplies, Mm -hmm. because that's a very thin margin, you know, if you're making motherboards. But the thing with this, yes, I think there might be a niche market on desktop motherboards in the, you know, mini micro ATX, ITX form factors where Z height is at a premium, you know, Mm because pancake RAM makes sense (laughs) on a laptop, right? Yeah, it does. It's flat and you don't, you know, the (laughs) the more squishy you can get it. No, more importantly, more importantly, not only it's replaceable pancakes, you know, instead of like soldering it on. That's what we were talking about. The advantage of last week with a laptop, you know, easy to upgrade. I'm next. We got Windows Audio plugins. You run Wine. You know what Wine is, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wine is not an emulator. That's at one time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> old, for us old school I think the, uh, Linux users. Wine project now is like, what does Wine stand for? Like, it doesn't even stand for anything at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's Wine is just Wine, is uh, I think how they roll with it these days. But. Why I'm talking about all this is we forget that wine can do something other than play games. And that's what I wanted to cover with this article um, and guide and video that I made for interfacinglinux.com. Windows Audio plugins on Linux using an application called Yawbridge. Because, you know, 30 years of wine and it's been bridging the gap between Windows and Linux running our applications. And like I said, mainly we're using it for games. I think a lot of people in the audience are like games. But the utility of it goes all the way out to the nasty, psychotic world of audio, real-time audio. And that's where Yawbridge comes in to make all of this like crazy, well, relatively easy. If you're familiar with Linux, this is really, really simple. And my guide I put together, it's going to outline getting the latest and greatest version of Wine up and running on your Linux install, getting Yawbridge set up, and installing your favorite Windows plugins for your digital audio workstation. Now, this wasn't just something I made for the sake of making it. Because right now, uh, if you're watching the live stream, listening to it, listening to the podcast, I have a Windows plugin. I cover this in the video. 
running in Reaper under Linux using Yawbridge because there is not a good declicker plugin on Linux. It doesn't exist. I know someone's going to say, but there's a declicker Nyquist plugin in Audacity. It's trash. I'm sorry. Uh, it might be good for taking clicks out of a vinyl because you recorded a vinyl for some reason. It's not good for speech. And Acron Digital makes a restoration suite. It's very not uncheap thing to buy, which I did, but I talked to them, got on the email. I like the phone. Yes, I had, who would call anybody these days? I'm like, do I need any type of online res- registration? Do I need hardware keys? And they're like, no, we're just going to send you a serial. You punch that in. I bought it and I've been running it for over a year. It's running right now and it handles, it is a real time algorithm that algorithm. That's a word, isn't it? <laughs> that handles any type of uh, mouth clicks that you might get when you're just talking and it works a treat. And I want to tell everybody how I got that set up and how I use it. But I also want to talk about like the performance differences between running native VSTs, CLAP VST2, VST3 versus running them through Wine because there's the overhead of Wine and how that could end up uh, causing you problems. And of course, I'm going to show you all the compatibility stuff like, you know, what works with Bitvig, Reaper, Carla, Qtractor, Renoise, Adore, Mixbus. And of course, I made a handy equation for everybody. A real handy equation (laughs) for you at home, because I know the most common question that's come in is, will my audio plugin work? This is how you do it. Just punch that in for audio listeners. Go take a look at it, because I don't want to say that out loud um, to help you out. That's my spiel for audio and Linux. Let's talk about (laughs) Raspberry Pis, our slice pi section, Compute Module 5. Woohoo! So, in an interview with Raspberry Pi YouTuber Jeff Gerling, and hello out there, the Jeff. He's he's been in our chat before during our live stream of LWW, and that was a lot of fun. He was at an interview um, with Raspberry Pi CEO Eben Upton at CES, and Eben Upton confirmed that Tom's not only hardware, will... you did not spend much time on that shot, did you? Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah very. Low res. So, uh, Raspberry Pi CEO Eben Upton did confirm that Raspberry Pi 5 production is ramping up like we talked about last week, but there is a new Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 actually coming soon. And Eben Upton didn't, didn't specify time yet, but he just kept saying, you know, was, uh, he, had, he had told uh, Jeff Gerling it was coming soon. And the Raspberry Pi company has actually released guidance on its website already for people and companies to make products for the new Compute Module 5. And like the Compute Module 4, the Compute Module 5 will have the same dual connectors, which is really very good. And I am actually hoping that the CM5 will come in as many variations as the CM4. They had various options from 1 to 8 gigabytes and different storage sizes. So I, I'm sure that's in the works and that that takes a bit of time to get that all together. But I have a feeling we're going to see that within the next year. <laughs> you know would make the Raspberry Pi really amazing? <laughs> what? <laughs> ben? If you could buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Raspberry Pi 5 is coming. <laughs> Unlike the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, yeah. <laughs> Which is made out of unobtainium. Like, you can't. I've yeah, been that trying one to has get one hard. for a long time. Like, I've given right. up. I'm like, whatever. So, yeah, good news. We'll see when it comes out. Mm-hmm. I'm more interested in nano coding, so. Yes, this is cool. <laughs> Speaking right. of Raspberry Pi, <laughs> nano coding, son. A pie running underwater at CES in Las Vegas. Why would you do such a thing to a poor Raspberry Pi? Well, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to fault them for it. This is from HZO. They decided, uh, they decided to show off their special coatings. Uh, they doused a pie with you know, their mystery fluid and just gave it the dunk. You know, Here's this thing sitting in a tank, running, powered up with both USB-C and HDMI, plugged in for 525 days. That's now, awesome. Outside of just like, okay, that's cool. 
there's practical purposes for aerospace engineering and like very harsh environments with these coatings because, uh, you know, they protect against moisture and dust and apparently, you know, submersion for 500 days, which is kind of neat. Or, you know, if you're like me and you've always had a dream of filling an entire swimming pool with raspberry pies for nefarious reasons, <laughs> you might be able to pull it off. Now, this was just kind of a tech demo for them. This is not, you know, you're not going to be able to buy um, H2O away from them. You know, th this is like big boy, super expensive, you know, stuff. They're showing up like, hey, we can code everything like this. And I'm sure some people who have dropped their mobile phones in water are like, why, why isn't this on all my electronics, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I was really, really happy when you posted this in the show show notes, Ben, because I I had read an article recently about the HZO company running the Raspberry Pi underwater for such a long time, but I didn't know it was on display at CES. So this is the first time I'd seen a picture of it at the Consumer Electronics Show. I'm always, so. um, I mean, you get my interest anytime you apply a coating with plasma. Like, oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> let's go let's do that uh it's better than like what was it like fluorine or whatever the you know non-conductive done mineral oil like do not do a mineral oil pc build you'll do it once and you, like it's neat it does work but you gotta just anything that you do that build with and be just prepared to throw it away yeah because <laughs> you'll never get all the mineral oil off trust me i know this firsthand uh but with a raspberry Pi, that's cool like um if you wanted to spray something like 500 days, if you want to dunk stuff, like that's cool. That would give it a mention. All right. That's really cool. <laughs> Before we get out of here, I don't know if we, uh, I, I gave him a shout out last week. Uh, I don't even have the last week's show notes. So did we uh, give Becca a mention last week? Yes, we did. We did. All right. See, yeah. we didn't forget. Heiz is making double short. I, <laughs> but I didn't and I have saw it. him in chat on Discord. <laughs> I didn't have it in the credits last week. That's what it was. I got you in the credits this week, my man. All right. Uh, if speaking of credits and Discord and all that, if you want to come join our little team, mm -hmm. head over to LinuxGameCast.com. We we'll get a support button. You can join us on Patreon. If you become a patron, you get the pre-show, post-show, you get this. We give you a commercial-free video, high-quality video version of this show available just for you. Access to our Discord and uh, live and uncut, week early in podcast format. If you want to listen to the entire live stream and a couple other things early access to videos and stuff we're working on we got amazon wish list uh jordan has one jill has one pager's got one i got one for the studio we even have a merch store along with an amazon storefront if you're curious about every single thing in the studio making it go burr it's there and of course humble affiliate bundles but we do yes thank you and uh pop in say hi catch us live and all the other fun things that go on there we go we did good now we have all our beautiful patrons to thank, including our Theron, our advisor in chat right now. <laughs> and we have uh, our executive producers, Barbrandt, Scott M, Atomic, our Chicago Kicks people, Empty, Blasmia, <laughs> and our sea monsters, Hakeem, David, Darkwing, System Team, Mark, Dias, and Joe. And our Death Notes, Nova, Back, Dodger, <laughs> I can't read faster in our chairlings. And also in chat right now, we have Don M. We have Scott Michaud. Yeah, so many beautiful people. All right, beautiful people. Thanks for <laughs> hanging out with us. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Bye bye. We got Mr. Beastwick in chat too. <laughs> and we had community time in our pre shows. And <laughs> <laughs>